Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to add right side bend to fix your early extension and get more rotation. All right, guys, before we jump in, I want to talk to you about two things quickly. Number one, we have launched all of our dates for our two-day golf schools at the Bethlehem Golf Club. Would love to have you guys come for two days. Truly is the best thing to improve your game, improve your overall golf game. A two-day immersion event is much better than getting the one-hour lesson week after week after week. So if you guys can make it to Bethlehem for two days, would love to have you. We'll put the link in the description down below. If you can't make it for two days or in-person lessons, we also built CogornoGolf.com for that reason would love for you guys to join our online community. We have a ton of different courses, a huge quick fix section, lots of different practice drills on the site, really guided step-by-step -step learning for you guys, along with our Facebook community, where you can post your swings up. We have a community where we're helping each other get better. I would love to see you guys come, join our community, join our group of golfers, all trying to help each other get better. We'd love to see you guys there. All right, guys, Eric here outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. I want to talk to you about adding right side bend to fix your early extension and how to get more rotation with that right side bend. So uh, let's talk about what right side bend is. Let's kind of go through the concepts first, uh, and then we'll talk about how to start doing it, and then we'll, we'll give you some drills. So if I take my normal uh, setup position, I just stood up like a normal human being outside. What right side bend is, what we're talking about specifically, is if I got my right shoulder closer to my right hip without my left side of my hip moving forward. So that's what I'm gonna determine is right side bend. Right shoulder closer to my hip without my hip moving forward. So like you're doing like a little bit of like an oblique crunch here. This little right side bend or oblique crunch movement is one of the key movements uh, that good players have in their golf swing, which is why they don't really extend and why they have rotation. I'll talk about that in a minute. So right side bend, shoulder closer to hip, hip not forward. If your hip goes forward like this, I'm gonna call that a tilt, okay? So your pelvis moves forward, this goes forward. That's not what we want. I want this going down without the hip moving forward. You can even feel like your hip goes up a little bit as your shoulder goes down. That's right side bend. Now, what's the deal with right side bend? How's that gonna fix my early extension? How does that add rotation? When we're talking about right side bend, while we will have a little bit of right side bend out of dress, okay, I'm gonna set up with some of it. Uh, the reality is right side bend becomes important during the downswing and follow through. So when I take my normal setup, let's talk kind of stock golf swing. Normal setup position. I don't stand straight up and down with my spine. I have a little right side bend out of dress, okay? Now the reality is when I make my backswing, I lose all of that right side bend. Whatever I had there when I go up to the top is now gone. I now during my backswing have left side bend. Okay, that's my left shoulder going to go through my left hip without this hip going forward, left side bend. So have a little side bend, I lose it going back. Now I have no right side bend. At the top of your swing, your right side from shoulder to hip should be pretty long. It should be stretched out. Now your left shoulder, left hip are crunched down, but not this side. Now the key is you have to regain that right side bend right away during the downswing and keep regaining it all the way at and past impact. If you don't do that, you will in all likelihood early extend and not have a lot of rotation. Right side bend, I lose right side bend, long right side, and then as I begin down, I wanna start getting my right shoulder closer to my right hip. Now, do I do it like this? Just right side bend with nothing else? Of course I don't do it just like that. I, no one swings like that, I wouldn't go here, but I am doing that, I am adding right side bend, with some forward bend and with some rotation. Okay, I just lost a couple people on that. Right side bend, your right shoulder and right hip should be getting closer together. That's right side bend. But as I'm doing that, really when I start down, I'm also adding flexion, which just means I'm bending over, chest closer to the ground. I'm also going right side bend, forward flexion, rotation. And that should look like a pretty darn good golf swing because that's what good golfers do. The key is getting this right side bend part. How do we do that? Up to the top. I want to feel my right shoulder and right hip getting closer together, which would be like my right shoulder's going down and my right hip's going up even, okay? Especially if you've been in early extender for a long period of time. But as I'm doing that, I'm also going to be turning and staying flexed forward. So I'm right shoulder, right hip like this. Right hip goes up, 
right shoulder goes down, but I'm also turning as I do that. Now notice my left hip goes way back. I have a lot of hip rotation. Did I think to myself, hey Eric, rotate your hip a lot there? I didn't. Why did it happen? Because I had right side bend and then opened up. So that's gonna be our starting point to start to feel this, okay? Of course, there are other micro movements with it, but the idea is get your right hip and right shoulder closer together as you turn, okay? So the goal when I start to work down is, okay, I'm gonna feel my right hip and my right shoulder getting closer, and I'm opening to get to a point where like at impact, I'm gonna feel like my right shoulder's lower, my right hip is higher and my chest is more towards the target. I'm gonna start with that and then we'll kind of work through the details. So let's make a downswing. I want you guys to do this with me too when you get a chance. Up to the top, right shoulder, right hip get closer together as I'm opening and let's just do a little half swing. I'm adding right side bend during the initial part of the downswing. Right shoulder down, right hip up as I'm turning. Okay, and that would be attempt number one. Now. When you do this correctly and you add right side bend, a couple of things we need to talk through. Number one is when you get down to impact, especially if you have early extension, part of early extension is this flexing forward, extending back. That's a part of it, okay? But it's also right side bend. So when I come down, if I go to impact and I lose all my right side bend, here's me with right side bend, bent over to the right. If I lose all my right side bend and I lengthen my hip to shoulder, what is that now? Standing straight up, right? Here's right side bend. Here's no right side bend. What do good players look like? The first one or the second one? They look like the second one. Their right shoulder's more down, their hips more up, they have side bend, and they keep it into the follow through. So the point I wanna make with that is, if you do this correctly in the beginning, if you're doing half swings, by the time you get to your follow through, you should feel like you're more bent over, like you're more tilted over, like your right ear is actually pointed down towards the ground, almost as though I'm looking at my target like sideway, like horizontal this way, would add more right side bend compared to looking at it straight up and down is no right side bend. So let's go ahead and give that a shot, same thing. Right shoulder, right hip closer together as I'm turning and I'm more bent over in my follow through. If you're someone who's early extended, if you do this correctly in the follow through, you should literally feel like you are like horizontal uh, looking at the target. So that'll be a little bit goofy. Right shoulder, right hip get closer as I turn, bent over on the way through. Good, and that would be right side bend. So when I get done, notice I'm still here. I'm not here. Now, eventually, I don't care if you get all the way up there, but in the beginning, let's stay tilted over. And that, that's all that is, is right side bend. Let's do that one more time. Right shoulder, right hip get closer as I turn. I'm bent over in my follow through. Good, and that's the same thing. So for you guys that don't do that, you're gonna feel like your neck's tilted, your shoulder's down, this stays crunched together. You have some different feels with that. Now, that should kind of show you, hopefully in there, how that would fix your early extension. If I go here normal, and I add right side bend, boom, just here at this, right side bend, and I turn, is there any chance that I'm standing too far up if I get a lot of right side bend? No, even if I'm extended forward, I'm still bent over because I have right side bend. You see the difference there? Even if I early extend here this way, I add right side bend and I turn, I still look pretty darn good, right? When you guys have a bad early extension pattern, it's not only that you do this, it's that you don't have right side bend and rotation with it as well. So that's how that fixes that. Now, what I'm also saying is, when you do this, your hip goes up, your shoulder goes down, that will help induce the rotation automatically. So it's kind of as simple as that in the beginning, is I want you guys to feel that. The drills and the cues are just feeling that, getting this distance between your hip and shoulder, even literally just stand there for a couple seconds, make your right hip go up, make your right shoulder go down, almost like you're coming on your toe, and feel that little crunch. Take that same feel and turn your belt buckle and your shirt buttons to the target. That's sort of your impact. So normal setup, feel your right hip go up, right shoulder down, turn towards the target, you should feel a good crunch here, that's your impact feel. Take your normal setup and then try and recreate those same feels into your follow through. And again, you should feel more bent over. That's kind of cue number one. Cue number two, is literally just think about that sort of horizontal view of the target. Like, hey, okay, I've been really extending, I'm not rotating. How about if I feel on the way through like 
I stand at the target and then I just literally bend myself over until I'm actually horizontal. Here's me straight up and down, no side bend. Here's me actually horizontal. Like, wow, it looks like I'm looking at this sideways. Good, let me take my normal setup and recreate that same feel where I get to that in my follow through. So you can either do it in the early downswing part, get the hip, get the shoulder closer, or if you don't like that feel, you can feel like you're getting to a spot later. Like, hey, let me just get to here where I'm all the way this bent over. Either one of those will help those feels. Ear down, looking at it sideways, this closer, whatever. The point being when you do that, a lot of that early extension should go away. You should rotate better, which ultimately should mean better contact, better club face control, probably less curve, probably more distance. So check out right side bend, something that can really help your golf swing. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell, also please subscribe if you haven't. Another reminder, every Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're here live on YouTube for Rapid Fire Golf. Would love to see you guys there. Bring your questions. Thank you guys.